Let's, uh, I suppose I should have told you that before you get it. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's it it all be a river. <laughs> Welcome to another video. This is either going to be a long video or it's going to be multiple parts. Uh, I'm going to start just by kind of briefly updating on stuff that's happened with the truck. I started filming a video working on the turbo manifold studs and bolt thing and it was a huge mess. So I'll probably post some of that and you'll see that. But I did get new studs and new bolts and the turbos held back on. Um, and I went and I drove the truck and I realized that when I hit boost, uh, my RPMs go up and I build boost uh, and my speed stays exactly the same. So my clutch is slipping horrendously under boost. So it's done and today is the start of putting a new clutch in the truck. So I got, it's here in a box, I got a stage two eBay clutch just because it was cheap and because I want, I have a, a cruise I want to do on Saturday and it's Thursday. And if I don't get this done, then I'll take the bike. But the idea is to get this done, get the clutch swapped out. Um, and then I can use the cruising time as a break in period. And then if I want to go to a madness later on, I can't because we still got tires and just overall betterness that has happened, albeit small. Uh, the test back out. Didn't get seats done still because brackets are a pain. They're over there somewhere. So you can hear in the background, we've got several people here today. Anthony's here, Andrew's here, and also my buddy Dylan is here. Hey. So I don't know if anyone else is gonna show up or not, uh, but the idea is that we can all kind of work together and pull the transmission out of this, throw the clutch on. We're literally, it, there's so much more you should do if you're pulling the transmission out like rear main seal and like inspect your flywheel and get it machined or replaced um the carrier bearing is probably is is not in great shape all that stuff should be done um but i'm not going to i'm just going to pull the old clutch off and put the new clutch on because it's a cheap clutch i don't care i just want to drive and it should be fine so I'll get this camera angle changed, film some, we'll just run, work some, bring you in, bring you out, we'll see how it goes. So, yeah, clutch time. Okay, so I guess I'll go under and see what I need to start taking apart. Oh, I was gonna get a paint pen, I don't think I have one. Paint pen? Yeah, I wanted to mark the drive shaft, because we're gonna have to take it. Uh, oh, parts. Oh, something got around here. Got a Sharpie. I have regular paint. Yeah. It's black. Oh, white paint. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, just put your fingers, and yeah. you have the line right there. It's perfect. Hey, Dylan, want to see if this works? <laughs> Not power. really. <laughs> I don't know who let you have fire extinguisher. Full pen. Full upright. Oh, my fire extinguisher? No. <laughs> Those aren't cheap. Hey, man. They really aren't. I oh, think. Pull it down. Now, I think Frankie used this like once. Yeah. At a. Yeah. 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 Let's not. We shouldn't need to mark the rear diff. Here, let me, let me get up under there real quick. Yeah. Oh, that's gnarly. Can I roll the windows down on this? Yeah, that's fine. No. Well, I know some cars don't like that. Oh, yeah, this one's fine. All right, Chuck, this is the moment where you're not fall. Yeah. So that's slip joint into the transmission. Okay. Carrier bearing, which sucks, but we've got it, and I don't have one piece drive shaft. And as you can see, like, do you have a? See how that's like. Can you know, replace this? Or what? The new? I don't know. I don't have the carrier bearing. Okay. We're just gonna send it because I don't want to do it because I want to put a one piece drive shaft. Oh, okay. Now, so I just have to so try to find one to salvage our name. That's an eighty-five. I can say. So we can pull the rear off. 
And then this, there should be a slip joint in here. Mm -hmm. So then if we drop that, we should be able to pull this out, I think. But my concern with that is two-piece drive shafts have a, are weighted. So like there's like little bits like welded on them because they have to, they're balanced, right? Yeah. So when we take it off, we need to be able to get it back on the same way. Well, you have to get a little light. I got a on me. That'll work. Yeah, this carrier bearing is completely shot. We're gonna, we're gonna ignore that and so Usually when I take a couple shots, I'm fine. Yeah. Good for you. Okay. Let's get here. Is that a slip joint? It doesn't really matter. We may not have to take it apart because we can just unbolt. <laughs> that's that's actually impressive. So there's um there's washers underneath the carrier bearing mount, mm -hmm. which means hey, somebody has not? raised it up, which is good because like when you <laughs> when you lower these trucks, it changes your angle, and uh, to help correct yeah, that, you, yeah, yeah. you space that out. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's actually kind of cool. So when somebody's going to get work, and did at least tried to do a decent job. I mean, it still roached it. What's that? <laughs> oh yeah, there's no bow in the loose I forgot. I completely forgot about it. That's how you got it to be able to go down. Yeah. Nice. Uh, well, then you see the clamps on them. Yeah. 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 These. Well, it used to be. So my loose springs don't flex at all. They just suck. Oh, wow. That's funny. And the sway bar. That's aftermarket on the rear axle there. Oh, yeah. oh it's on back that way. Mm -hmm. These shocks, uh, different shocks. Yeah, I know. I definitely noticed the shocks. Yeah, they're yeah. Bad. yeah. That's so looking around, I was like, yeah, yeah this would be a good decent hard one. Yeah. Very good. I'm not It's actually. I John need a new boot. What's that? You need a new boot. Why? Because this one's split. Oh. Split. Oh. It's the one underneath the big one. Like hold it down. Oh, like the uh, little cover or whatever? Yeah. Okay, that explains why it gets kind of greasy down there. Yep. Oh, no. <laughs> She's clapping down there. <laughs> She's clapping down. Yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. So what happened? That boot was that. Oh, yeah. Good yeah. 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 old zip tie. That video that I was watching, like it was a guy like, yeah, replacing that boot. The aesthetic, as they say, it's just gonna get left. <laughs> 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 now, that <laughs> nah, we'll put, we'll put that's what we call fashion. <laughs> uh, I'll probably go, I'll probably go back to the sound yard and pull watch this. And pull one. Oh, the one go off that's on? Down? No, uh, I found another one. Score one really back on. You watched my videos, you should be able to that. Oh, is that? No, I found a white one there uh, when I went there last week. Nice. Not me. It's the nicest hard body I've ever seen in a solid chart. You know, like, I went and saw that. I went and looked at that black one here in town uh, a little bit ago, or I don't know, like a month ago now. And that white one in the solid jar was way better. We just bought the whole thing. Blaine's got a I don't know. trailer that can pull it. Yeah. So I don't know. Slide like, on a rudder or something. Like a four rudder. That would be pretty sweet. Hear me out. Two me out engines. Two me out Okay, one, I'm going to keep it a buck fifty with you. The engine he's got in there now is about the same size as the Miata engine, that's if not a little bigger. bigger. That's why you put two. You get you. No, I've always thought it would be a cool Twin, to design. Turn, turn, turn. To design. Uh, it's not a V8, a V8 it's just an eight. <laughs> based on, or design a V8 based on that. Eight twin line. line. There like, we go, John. Graph two of those together at the 4.8 of the V8. No, John, honestly, what Rich is saying, the two Miata engines, then you have the first two eight cylinder, two inline. An inline eight? An inline eight, but uh, it's this way. Like, like, parallel eight. Instead of them doing the V, they messed up and just made everything straight. Yeah, so yeah. How would you connect power? 
I don't know, there's some dude that has the Jetta that has two engines, because it's rear wheel and front wheel. Yeah, okay. And it has the two, and has the two shifters. So yesterday, I found something fun about the Koba. It's like two motors. The bottom, you know, goes to a bolt that's a bolt during the train, right? My car's a bolt. Nice. Your what is loose? That's safe. The bolt that holds my seatbelt down. <laughs> oh, overrated. You don't even wear your seatbelt. Oh, okay. but yeah, yesterday <laughs> I like I was taking I, I took the seatbelt off on air. Clink, clink, clink. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. <laughs> and I wrote, I twisted my hand and I twisted it was like, cool. Uh, okay, yeah, good. <laughs> We're not gonna think too hard about that. I'd really rather use a paint pen. <laughs> I think a sharpie would probably be fine. I mean, as long as you can see it through the rust. Just take and take them from work. Yeah, why? Well, because we only have like twenty thousand there. What do you do for work, Dylan? Are you at nothing? A... Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> With the position I have, I barely work. I'm usually on YouTube looking at computer parts. Nice. So see Are you at? Check that. Oh yeah. What? Where at? Where why? Oh, okay. I'll show you what you do. You do what did then. Just put a little fidget spinner in it. So when the air's spinning. Are you laughing like the French bees? Huh? Tony's out here laughing like the French bees. That's from Veggie Tales. You wouldn't fucking know. Because you're a player. Sorry, I grew up. Uncultural wine. I grew up poor. I think we can afford Veggie Tales. We had. Hey, don't yeah, cut your thumb some... on that. Yeah, this is exactly what we Here. sliced our thumb on. Knuckles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Same <laughs> answer. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing, man. You had veggie tails, I had fruit stories. This or is thumbs. The, the boot, like, that's what bolts the boot down. The mess. Is shaped like that? Oh, yeah, uh, it's a little. Uh, it's a little, little extra bent. So, ba yeah, basically, this guy was on top of the transmission tunnel. Uh, there was uh, the big boot here. I could go over there and show y'all. The big boot goes on over. This goes underneath the carpet, and it um, clamps the boot and the second boot down, and it's super sharp. Rich and I both cut our fingers a little bit, so we got matching band-aids, both on the same hand. Um, but there was, uh, yeah, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, six screws, I believe, and then possibly like a rivet. I wasn't sure I didn't do that one. That uh, popped it out. But just be careful. Put on gloves or something. Or put band-aids on your hands before you start messing with this. Because this lip right there is very sharp. So, note self. I have no idea what size bolts those are. They're not hard. Well, it's always the last one you try. Uh, yeah, this one right here. It's not a very good knife. Uh, any, it, uh, any knife that passes. Stab. Somewhere in the drawer, too. See what he does. Yeah. Okay, I'm, no, I'm not gonna say because then it spoils it. Yeah. Pretty sure he's gonna wrap his thumb in electrical tape. I'm not doing that. I'm not, I'm not. Are you sure? I'm gonna tape off the RA on the fuel ratio so it just says fuel fuel TO. <laughs> so there he is. Uncle sure. Fuel. Sure. <laughs> I don't know if they already did it or not, or if you guys heard it before, but somewhere underneath there, uh, they have marked where the drive shaft is so it's in line so it doesn't get um, off weighted, off centered type thing. That's a little weight there. Um, there's a mark, I think he said it towards the rear diff. Uh, that's just so you, we don't, either John doesn't get uh, bad drive shaft wobble from getting spinning around in different orientation. You say pretty bad, I say pretty good. Oh, let's see here. It's gonna be my band name. They're down there. I oh, believe yeah. take in the drive <laughs> shaft I've had this off, off of, had of the, the, the diff. I'll move you guys down there. Is it in gear? Rich, is it in gear? It might have been. It's not. Is it now? Your rear wheels are on the ground. Uh, yeah, that's true. And I have a lock, and I have a lock differential, so yeah, that won't really be a lot cooler if it did. Uh, it may have to, to get it off, we'll see. Alright, she's in neutral now. Okay. Yeah, I have a lock differential.
That's why it's different from last time. What size is that supposed to be? Supposed to be. A size. Preferably one that fits. Not 15. See, it makes you small. Pull that apart. Where's oh, that Ooh. code? Not the freaking Scooby Doo. All right. Several hours later, this thing's out, and looks like not even that big, but it's a real tight fit to get one of these out. So you can see where I kind of drug it out from under here. So, yeah, there's the back of the old KA on a hole in the floor. Back to the drive shaft, which is just kind of hanging. And the carrier bearing, that's in pretty bad shape. But, yeah, so next is get that clutch off of there and just take a look at things. Make sure it seems okay. And put the new clutch in and then wrestle that back in again. Which was a really bad time. So we had to what? We had to pull drive. So you have to pull the drive shaft. Yeah. Obviously. We pulled the starter. Yeah. And I think that's probably the way to go because the starter bolts in right here. Uh, so yeah. we have the starter just hanging under there. So we pulled starter. Unless you pull the starter out with it. Yeah, which you, you could do. do I think you could do. Which sounds terrible. And then let's see. Back here, the hardest bolts are these two. <laughs> the ones on top? That one's weird. This is odd because... It's a sensor. Not the sensor either, is it? I thought it was. Well, it's kind of like a weird thing with dangling up in there. Oh, was it? Maybe. I don't know for sure. I remember. I wasn't here when y'all were messing with that part. Because this came off like that. Yeah, this so was on there. My, me thinks that's a sensor. But where's the sensor then? Oh, I thought I saw something banging up in there. So it is still up in there. Uh, okay. So that's some it kind of sensor. Be, if not, then you're kind of well, something. I never unplugged it specifically, so it may have just found its way out. Which is handy. I guess. <laughs> but yeah, those two bolts are the hardest bolts. And there's two more. So there's only four bell what? housing bolts. Yeah. No, what? Yeah. There's only four bell housing bolts. There's a couple of bolts that are down here, but they just hold. They just, do the, they the, just hold that the, little thin the little plate. Yeah, cover thing. So yeah, we were able to get it. Two of us definitely made it easier getting it out. Um, but yeah, we just used a regular jack. Even then, the jack was overkill. Yeah, it, it wasn't didn't super really quite want to do what we wanted it to. Yeah. But yeah, things have devolved <laughs> a lot. And we're out here looking pretty disheveled now. I am surprised just how greasy everything was under there. But it's it's been rough. It's a little, a little, a little juicy. Yeah. A little juicy. So That'll probably about do us right, for like, now, but <laughs> yeah, no, our hair is gnarly. <laughs> I'm sure the back of my hair is real gnarly. Uh, look, nah, it's not that bad. The sides are really good. Yeah, yeah. That's how it goes. Anyway, <laughs> went ahead and took the clutch and pressure plate off, and uh, you can see. I'll get in here. She's done. Absolutely was definitely the clutch slipping that I was feeling. Ooh. <laughs> it's a bit rattly. Yeah, it's it's done. Um, the spring is messed up on there? No, well, it's like, like well, the plates. No, I was about to say, the springs look different. Uh, no, or I think that's that normal. All, yeah, they, they do be weird. They kind of alternate. That's gnarly. Either way. Um, the new one. Oh, I got sweat running down my eye. The new one's totally different as far as that goes. Yeah. Hopefully the splines are correct. Probably. Should be. But that makes sense that the springs would be different on this one because it is supposed to be a stage two. So it's supposed to be 
a little more aggressive feeling. So I did. But yeah, that is yeah, that's bad. That's bad. It's bad. It's real bad. It's the next day after uh in the afternoon again. I just kept on working a full day and now I'm gonna try and get this clutch done because there's a cruise tomorrow and I kinda wanna take this. So is this kind of stupid? Yes. Um, I realized I went and looked over some of the footage from yesterday and it cut out and I thought it had filmed more and I realized like we thought like started filming and then there's nothing and then it's straight to hey the transmission's out and it's dark now. Um, plus then we did a little bit more so I'll go ahead and show show some more stuff here. So, yes, transmission is out. I think I touched on briefly yesterday, and if I did, I'll cut up the stuff that I'm repeating. Drive shaft back there, four bolts, that end comes down. The center support carrier bearing gets unbolted. You can leave your drive shaft together. At that point, you can then slide your drive shaft out from the back of the transmission with the drip tray, because it's gonna start losing fluid. Um, you honestly might as well drain the transmission first before you even pull the tail shaft out um, okay so yeah fluid and then plugs on the transmission this one there's a couple more that attach to it this one there's this one which is you have to get to from inside the engine bay inside the truck the shifter boot and the entire shifter has to come off so it looks like that these bolts for the engine mount, which are the ones you access from up underneath there. Just those ones, and then obviously the corner ones when you're ready to start dropping. We took the starter out. Yeah. That, I believe, is it. Bell housing bolts, obviously, transmission comes out. Simple enough. I did pull the clutch and pressure plate off. It looks like that. It's pretty rough. I also spent some time and got the old pilot bushing out. So the new one can go in, new clutch, new pressure plate. I'm not resurfacing the flywheel because I just want the truck back together to drive for this weekend and for the rest of this fall uh, before winter hits and then once winter comes i'll go ahead and i'll go ahead and probably pull this out again and do this more correctly probably put a new carrier bearing in and get the flywheel either resurfaced or replaced uh, when i do that i'll of course do the rear main seal because i'm sure that leaks at least a little i'm just kind of ignoring it so yeah, at this point, I'm going to bolt the new clutch back on, I think. So, yeah, let's get into that. So, last night I already cleaned up the hole after doing the grease trick to get the old one out. Is a little trickier with the flywheel being there. Yeah, quite a bit trickier. And I don't have the right hammer for this job. To get it started, you really should have like a plastic or brass. More normal size hammer. All I have is this four pound hammer. So. The other problem is, is I can't actually hit it without using something like a socket to push it, but I don't think that'll work. So lining this up is going to be a treat.
because it needs to go in straight. What if the clutch alignment tool would help? Probably not. Just kind of need it to seat a little. But it does not want to. Okay, there it kind of did. Not really. This is going to fall. I really could have and should have just left this in there with the old one. It would have been fine. It really looked fine when I pulled it out. I wonder. I just. That sounds like Tony's truck. I was right. It is much quieter now that we got the exhaust put on it, but still recognizable. I guess I should say he's got exhaust put on it. We didn't do it. We had a shop do it. What's up? What's up? Oh. I am sore. Yeah, I can imagine. Those bags are on the van still. There's no rush. I'll help you get them if you want. Well, yeah, I figured I'd move the cab flare and just back up to it. And yeah, that works. Move fine. it on over. Yep. I think there's about eight of them in there. I mean, I'd like to think if it fit in the van, surely it could fit in the bed of the Ranger. I would think so. If not, just take what you can and I'll burn the rest of it here. I just don't want it to burn all of it here. Right. Because it would be a lot. I still left about seven or eight bags there too. Holy cow. Yeah, I did some work today. Just about there with this pile of bearing or bushing, whatever. Mm -hmm. See, like it, I don't know. I guess it's kind of more of a bushing than it is a bearing. It's certainly not like, it's not a needle bearing. It's not a roller bearing. It's It would be just like a frictionless friction bearing. Uh, just for oil? Right, so it looks like one of those, hmm. but I guess it's just brass or I don't know what it's made of. Interesting. But there's no yeah, good way to get it seat. No rolling stuff with it. It's yeah. just smooth. Hmm. You know? I consider that a bushing. Yeah, I think it is. I think the old one was seated a little deeper than that, so I got this socket. Right. And I don't know how else to do it other than this. Now I used the grease trick to get the old one out. Nice. It worked pretty good. I think next time I'd use bread. It would be easier to clean up, I think. <laughs> because grease is just, you know, everywhere. Plus yeah. you waste grease. Yeah. Um, stop by the bank, got gas. I'm getting 25 and a half miles to the gallon. Really? Yeah. That's impressive. Just from the exhaust job. Right. Just running more efficiently, you think? Yeah. It's still not good. Uh, sure. got a problem with it, actually. It's, uh, when I, like, say I'm going 60, 65, going towards the town or whatever, and I slow down to a 30, uh -huh. I have a tendency just to pop her into neutral and let her coast and break a little bit. Right. Well, it used to idle all the way down to 500, normal idling, as far as I'm considered. Mm -hmm. Now it stays up there at 11. Interesting. And it'll do that pretty much until I stop, either at a stop sign or a traffic light before it drops down to 500 huh. and then when i do get it down to 500 the it sounds like it's camped it can brum 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 it shakes the whole truck could be the o2 sensors so i'm wondering if it's i don't have an o2 sensor before the cat if that's it's right. really just 
Megan the ECU being like, what the heck is going on? It's got... Mm, that would be my guess. It's yeah. got... I got no gas reading before at this point, but then further back, I got 0.8 or whatever yeah. the thing would be reading. It's probably in some kind of limp mode because it doesn't have that R2 sensor. Yeah. So it's just trying to get by. Yep. I mean, it runs really nice. That's good. I don't know if maybe my socket's bottoming. It shouldn't be. This socket's slightly smaller. Yeah. But it's not bottoming, so I don't know. We're just gonna leave it there, I think. If we have an issue, then that'll be a thing to check, but I don't think we will. Yeah, because that's a 14 mil socket, which is just slightly smaller than it. Yeah. That should be good. Okay. So I pulled up my, uh, your YouTube channel on my school laptop, and I realized that. Uh, that Google account wasn't subscribed, so subscribed and started watching videos. And nice. it seems like you got a thing with matching the color of your hat to the color of your shirt. I do sometimes. <laughs> I do sometimes, yep. Not always. There's one video is like, yeah, I think it was titled The Simple Drift Truck or something like that. Probably. Or first time it drifted or whatever it was. Um, and you had your gray hat on, light gray hat on, a light gray shirt on. Yeah, that one on the back I washed out pretty <laughs> yeah. bad. I'm like, ooh. Some holes. Now, There's hold one. on. This is the first red part going on this truck. Uh, good chance of it. <laughs> it's a good thing it's getting covered up. Yeah, you won't ever see it. No. In case you couldn't figure it out, YouTube, uh, Anthony's here. <laughs> Tony. Oh, I know. They know. Because I heard the truck. Oh, okay. I can still hear it. Oh, yeah. I gave... like, before you know, before you read it. Like, oh, I, heard okay. it. I heard it when it was on the street. Oh, nice. And I was like, that sounds like Tony's truck. And then we waited a couple seconds, and then I kept hearing it, kept hearing it, and then I heard from from outside the garage. I'm like, yep, that's Tony. is the right word. They're dowels is what they are. Mm. Okay, that's two of them lined up. That's got it. Gotta be. If it wasn't, it is now. <laughs> yeah, it is. You're scratching the paint. Yep. <laughs> I do have rubber mounts. You need but, a little uh, dead blow hammer. I do need a dead blow hammer. I was just saying, I need like a dead blow hammer. I need like a plastic face hammer. Yeah, like nylon. Yeah. Yep. I almost made one of those once. It was for manufacturing. Yeah. And then a drill bit exploded inside of it and hit me in the face. And I said, all right, well, I'm not making one of these now. Oof. I'll do it. Look, a couple safety bolts in there. I just don't like how much slop, like how much play you've got. Because like I know, <laughs> it spins, that's interesting. I know this is the clutch alignment. Oh no, I guess you're supposed to do it so that this will slide in and out like kind of freely, right? Yeah, okay. So you just kind of play with it. Right there probably. Because then that slides straight in. And that is simulating your transmission shaft. Okay, cool. Are you gonna clean up the transmission before you put it back in? No. <laughs> that transmission's on its last legs anyway. That's why we're just throwing this together and not like getting the flywheel resurfaced or right changing out the throw uh not throw out bearing we are changing the throw out bearing which i hope doesn't bite me in the butt because it's a different style um the rear main seal you can see all this grossness here yep i'm sure that's from the rear main and probably yeah it needs to be done and if i was smart i would have ordered one online but the other thing is, is I didn't really want to take the flywheel off. Yeah. 
if I had more time and money, I would have just done it all at once. Right. Well, that's not, you see, that if I had enough money, I would have. Because it needs, my plan was put the new, get the new transmission looked over. Like, I, like, perfect situation, ideal situation, money's not a problem. Well, I guess if that's the case. If money ain't a problem, we ain't doing this. Well, that's true. <laughs> I would either get, I would either get the transmission I've got rebuilt or would have sent the other transmission that I have in to be rebuilt ahead of time. I would have gotten a one-piece drive shaft found already from the Frontier. But I just haven't been able to find one in a salvage yard because it's a super specific Frontier. Right. Or I just buy a new one, but that's like three hundred dollars for a drive shaft, which is not a, as far as I know, it's not a bad price for a drive shaft. But would that be aluminum or still a big heavy one? Probably still be a steel one, but it would be one piece and it wouldn't have a carrier bearing. Yeah, and that's the whole would point. Be beneficial. It would be super beneficial. Have you replaced a carrier bearing on this? No, I have not. Okay. Should we? Yes, because I'm not putting a one piece drive shaft in it. Right. And the carrier bearing, the bearing itself is still in good shape. But it's all like the of the support and, yeah. Yeah, and bushing around it is shot. Or rubber, whatever you want to call it. So it's going to get put back in and held together by whatever. Zip ties if I have to. But and it'll be fine. It just won't be right. Should do these in a star pattern, but I've forgotten what pattern I started in, so I've just kind of been trying to go across. So we had a substitute teacher today, YouTube. This guy, his name is Mr. Wyatt, and he's a little older, but he's a super cool substitute teacher. And every day, he's got a joke of the day. Sometimes even two. And his jokes of the day today, if I can remember them correctly, is what does the moon and a dollar have in common? This was, he had this one because uh, this morning was a super moon, I believe he said. It was super Super big, turned a little bit of yellow. I actually saw it while I was driving to CEO this morning. Um, four quarters is what's the same, is what's common between a, the moon and a dollar. Uh -huh. Yeah. Technically, yes. <laughs> you could say that about a, a lot of things, yeah. You could say that about an inch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can say it about a lot of Big things, bit. but it's just, it's enough off guard, like what? It's like, ah, oh, you're crapping me, right? And then he had another one. I don't know if I can remember it. All right, that's good. Just feed it for good measure. Yeah, that fits in there perfectly. Whack. Just don't. <laughs> Okay, pretty big update. We got the transmission back in. Yes, I was going to film some of this and I didn't. Say hello to Tony's boot. So yeah, there's the transmission, she's back in. Um, it's only held in with two bell housing bolts right now, but the cross member is in. Uh, it's not 100% tightened, but I wanted to get it in because this is the old throw out bearing. And like I mentioned before, I put that new throwout bearing in and it's a slightly different style. And I was concerned that it may not actuate proper, properly. So what we did is we got ourselves back together just a little bit. So the shifter is just loosely mounted in here. Um, first of all, with the new, the, the slave cylinder is hooked up. So the new clutch feel is way firmer than before. So definitely stage two clutch pressure plate things um, but anyway when I have it in neutral like I do right now um, Anthony can freely spin the drive shaft down there um, so obviously everything's clear uh, the clutch isn't bound up and anything like that 
when I put my foot on the clutch and then move the transmission into first, Anthony can still spin that transmission. Still spinning? Correct. Yeah, and then when I let off the clutch, locked up. it's locked up. So clutch is functioning. The throw out bearing, more importantly, is functioning uh, because if we are, we're getting enough throw uh, with everything like it is uh, that it's working properly. So that's big, big news. So for anyone who's curious, because the whole clutch with different part numbers, if you go to buy a clutch for these trucks and you have a 96 or 97, you're going to go on Rock Auto and you're going to see a bunch or wherever you're going and you're going to see a bunch of dates and numbers that say from whenever to, and to whatever. Uh, what I'm learning right now is that it doesn't matter for the clutch, pressure plate, or throw out bearing. Now, I have heard it does matter for the flywheel, so keep that in mind. But that kit that we just put in, uh, it's supposed to be for 95 and earlier. And that throw out bearing, I'm almost positive, is also designed for 95 earlier. And it's so far working just fine in the 96. So that's good. We're going to struggle some more now, get the starter put back in, the last two bell housing bolts. Um, and then it's time to hook the rear end of the drive shaft back up and carrier bearing. Yeah, carrier bearing, which is kind of a nightmare. Fluid back in it. Shifter reassembled inside. Did I say starter back in? Yes, you did. So I think that'll be it after that. Yeah. Oh, and that little crank sensor needs to oh, go back yeah. in the top, which is why there's this weird little cover covers that crank sensor anyway progress okay so two of the hardest bolts on the bell housing to get to are the top ones and i saw on forums and stuff online people saying you need to use swivel sockets to get them out that's not true the easiest and best way to do it is simply like this you just need an offset offset box wrench, standard wrench. This is just the one out of my DeWalt kit, 14 mil, and come to the top of the engine bay and you can hook that thing right on there. And that, I mean, that's gonna give you plenty of leverage. And if you needed more, I mean, you can obviously hook another one right on there and it just shoots, you know, right out the top here. So I'm tightening this one up now and uh, yeah. It occurred to me when I was putting this back together, I was like, I bet I could reach that with a wrench. And then it occurred to me, I bet I could reach that with a wrench from the top. And yeah, you can reach both of them. I think the one on the other side may be easier to reach with the wrench, but from below, that's how I got that one tight. But uh, yeah, we had a heck of a time getting those out and it definitely didn't, did not need to be that hard. So if you learn anything from this, yeah, just remember that. So I'm wrapping up the clutch job now. Transmission's back in, drive shaft's back together. Everything's hooked up, it's got fluid in it. The last thing was the shifter. And just a thing that I, well, first of all, the boot's ripped. So I think that's been part of the reason why it leaks a little. Another thing is I noticed this weird kind of notch in the shifter right there. I was like, that's, that's really strange. And my shifters had always been kind of loose and well, so this goes in there, and I realized that first of all, it won't fit around the shaft except for, uh, it does. But there has been made a clearance groove right there, I feel like. I could be wrong, maybe this is, maybe this is normal. But when you put this on, you lay that in there, it just seems small. Oops, this is kind of tricky to do one-handed. Come on. Yes. So it just, it's just loose in there. And I don't know, because I've never been into one of these, I don't know if it's supposed to be that loose, but it creates a lot of slop in the shifter that I feel like if you had a thicker snap ring 
or a more proper size snap ring, you wouldn't have that much play in it. Maybe that's normal, I really don't know, but there's a thing that I've noticed. Oh, and also my plan for this, because it's split right here, um, and this should, there's a groove, groove right there that that should sit into. Um, instead, what I'm gonna do is probably gonna cut the bottom of this off and just push that onto there and then get a hose clamp and just clamp that on there. So it's the best I got for now. Here's the repaired shift boot. I uh, put a little RTV right there. It kind of got everywhere, but it doesn't matter. There's a little hole there. And I figure that'll seal up and cover it most of the way. You can see that's the rest of the lower half. I just cut it off, clamped it right there. It's got full range of motion. Put another clamp there to uh, stop it from sliding, keep it in one place, and yeah. So that'll do just fine. Okay, so I got everything back together in the truck. Um, mostly back together. Yeah, everything's back together. We're gonna test this thing. Obviously it started, it's running, neutral works. Uh, we did the testing with Anthony before, so everything's good. I will say, holy cow, is that a way different clutch pedal. I mean, I know they say going to a stage three is pretty major. This is supposed to be a stage two. I mean, whatever this eBay's brand, eBay brand's version of stage two is, but like, all right, so let's, I mean, it's instant, and I'm, oh, I just squealed the tires in reverse because I'm so not used to this clutch. Okay. Wow, that, ooh, that's the, yeah, it's a little, she's a little low. This thing is insane. I'm probably gonna stall this thing. Like, I'm having to put so much pressure on my foot. Oh my gosh. That is gonna take some getting used to. Well, the good news is, is the truck drives.
just insane. cool I'm happy with that okay and that's a wrap on the clutch job for the hard body today I just wanted to kind of go over a recap of kind of everything we did if you are clicking on this video because you need to know how the transmission and clutch job goes on a hard body um, or if you're you know so you can just skip to here and I'll give my summary uh, but also just for anyone in general who wants to know what was going on. So I purchased for my 96 truck, a clutch kit that was listed as for 95 and previous that included the pressure plate, the actual clutch and the throwout bearing. I used all three pieces and it all worked just fine. So don't know why it's different part numbers, but it works just fine. As far as taking the transmission out of the truck to do the clutch job, obviously, Needs to be jacked up as high as you can get it. Give yourself space so you can get your transmission out from underneath the truck. You're gonna need to drain fluid out of the transmission. Um, keeping in mind, you need to be using Redline MT90. Uh, pretty much the only thing I would have ever heard recommended and pretty much the only thing you should use because it is actually a GL4 high performance. So. You need to get that. Uh, they sell it on Amazon, that's where I buy it. It's not cheap. So your fluid has to come out. If you're not planning on changing that fluid, collect it in a clean container, inspect it, and make sure you wanna put it back in. Um, but yeah, get yourself some of that. Fluid out, drive shaft off, drive shaft out of the way, as long as it's, you know, out. it doesn't have to come all the way out of the truck, but just out of the tail shaft of the transmission. Starter needs to come off. And then it could just kind of hang there. The slave cylinder, of course, needs to come off. It can also just hang there to the side. The shifter from the inside needs to come out. You can just take, you can either take the whole shifter plate off, the one, two, three, four, five, six bolts off the whole thing out, or you can just, you can take the boot off and then you can take that C-clip out and then pull the shifter arm out. So that's gotta come out. The bell housing bolts, I will say, People say online, you need to use a swivel socket from the in, from underneath and up in there and get swivel sockets to get those two top bolts out. You don't have to do that. Just get your standard wrench, open end box wrench. Uh, I like, my ones have the slight offset, like the slight bend on the end. Those are perfect because you can go right in from the top and turn those out, or you can go underneath actually and put your wrench on there and turn those out. That's how I, that's definitely the easiest way to get to those bolts. The other bolts aren't so bad. Um, that same open-ended and box-end wrench, especially if you have a shorter one in 14 mil, you need for the starter, the top starter bolt, you need for that. So that's the trick on that. But yeah, that's the main thing. Those are the main things, obviously, that, that it takes to get the transmission out. Once you do that, it's the cross-member bolts, four on the ends, and then two in the middle that go into the transmission. Uh, you get those off. That cross member comes out of the way, and then the transmission can go back, and then it can go down, can go out. And then the same way going back in, we use uh, both times, like in and out, we had two people, one on each side, plus the jack, uh, the jack just to kind of hold and help where we need to, but most of it was just us kind of tilt it up, set it on the member, bring it over, um, and then thing back together. Honestly, it went pretty well, so, 
I don't have any, nothing major went wrong, but it certainly wasn't easy. Those bolts were definitely a pain, especially when I didn't realize you could just use a wrench because it took me messing around with it to figure out that you had to do that or that you could do that. So that is about it on the clutch job. I want to say it took me like 12-ish hours, maybe more, because uh, I had never done one before. And yeah, not knowing. Now that I know, I'm sure it would go quicker, but that's just how anything goes. Um, and that was with me having help. And I really do think you need help to get that transmission out. It definitely make things easier. Unless you have like a transmission jack that, you know, holds it where you need it with angles and stuff. That would help. So yeah, I want to give a huge thank you to Andrew, Anthony, and Dylan for coming and hanging out and helping me a whole bunch. Uh, getting the transmission in and out. Uh, getting bolts undone. Getting connectors undone. And I'm just hanging out in general so I don't just lose my mind. Been here for hours working by myself. So huge shout out to those guys and thank you to them. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully if you were looking for some information on the clutch job, you got some. And if you're just interested in what I'm doing and how the truck's doing, hopefully this uh, was interesting to you as well. So I'll definitely have more content coming for you later. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to go to bed. See ya.